in about grade 10, I started up a small web development business. Um, and like I had a partner who was a fully fledged adult and he, he was going out and doing business development and I was hacking away at creating websites. I didn't have access to, to a lot of uh, money at the time, but by creating websites for customers, I, I was finding I could be quite entrepreneurial and then fund my obsession with technology. How's it everybody? Welcome to another insightful episode of Exponential Africa looking at tech frontiers and how do we innovate for a better tomorrow. And today we're going to explore the pioneering world of technological innovation with Adam Pantanovitz. Dr. Adam Pantanovitz has an amazing career. He's an iconic biomedical and electrical engineer, well known for initiating and leading the first group to connect a human brain live uh, to the internet in a, in a project called the brain internet, uh, a term he, that he coined. He's a technologist. He loves applied science skills and how they uh, impact the real world. He's co-founded a number of businesses uh, from societal impact projects, including Aura, Resolute Robotics, which is a robotics company, uh, ShiftStream, PRT Medical, uh, Think3 Dots. He's really just an incredible human being. And we're so lucky to have him on the show. Ed, thanks for joining us here uh, at Exponential Africa. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Mick. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've been uh, on this journey through technology and innovation for quite a number of years now uh, through Singularity University. Um, can you just share with us your how you got into this journey into the tech world? What sparked your interests and what were some of the major obstacles that you, you've overcome along the way? Absolutely. It's an interesting story for me. I mean, I guess it relates quite a lot back to my own life story. When I, when I was young, um, I used to love sports and I spent a lot of my time, like most young boys do, playing soccer or football, being out there, and, you know, and uh, when I was about 13, I unfortunately had a medical condition that sort of struck me quite badly. And it took me out of all of my sports and I was in bed at home for an extended period of time through the ages 14, 15, and so on. I actually ended up missing much of high school. But as a result of this medical condition, instead of being able to go out and play sports, I had a lot of free time. In fact, I wasn't even at school. So the free time that I had meant that I was s sitting at home and I had a, an early computer. When I say early, it was sort of a 486 uh, computer. It was connected up to the early stages of the internet with a dial-up modem and it allowed me to just explore technology. And I would really tinker a lot with this machine, write my own viruses, create my own software, really just hack away at it. And I tried to learn everything I could about computing. And it was through computer games that I was exposed to socialization and, and language and through the early stages of internet relay chat or IRC that I was exposed to the internet to scripting and to all sorts of other things. And then in, in about grade 10, I started up a small web development business. And this was around, I suppose, the year been around 2000. Yes. Um, and like I had a partner who was a fully fledged adult and he, he was going out and doing business development and I was hacking away at creating websites. And they ended up funding a lot of my technology through this because I didn't have access to, to a lot of uh, money at the time, but by creating websites for customers, I, I was finding I could be quite entrepreneurial and then fund my obsession with technology, which meant that I could get more access to technology and get engage with it more, get a cell phone and really just start understanding how technology worked. And that started my passion for tech and I suppose tech innovation. And then as I went through school, um, I was exposing myself with all this free time more and more to technology. And I ended up eventually getting myself into engineering. Um, despite some challenges with schooling, I was able to get into engineering. And funnily enough, I didn't know what engineering was at the time, but I heard about it during the orientation week of my university, which, which I attended, which is called Witz University in Johannesburg. And then I just uh, really just found something that I loved. And I immersed myself in biomedical engineering and later electrical engineering. And that started my career of um, thinking about things a little differently and really starting to flourish in the space of tech innovation. And ultimately, it, it, ultimately, ultimately it has led me, as you pointed out in your very generous intro, Mick, thank you, that 
I co-founded some businesses which use tech to create a better world. And I'm working at the university to create impact through an innovation pipeline so that the great ideas at the university can flourish into society and hopefully change society for, for the better, for good. I mean, it's just incredible. If you think about the decisions and the, 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 the choices and the, you know, the things in life that affect us, just imagine if you didn't have to, you know, be in bed and, you know, and not being able to move, would you have picked up a computer? Would you have been playing soccer? And your, your life part might have been completely different. You might have been an international soccer player, uh, you know, competing at the Olympics now. But instead, <laughs> because, you, because you, you had, uh, you know, one obstacle in your way, it sort of changed your path and led your path into a new dimension and a new reality that's, you know, obviously fulfilled your life as you've been going you know, over the years. It's a great observation. So, you're yeah. absolutely right. You're absolutely right about this. I mean, had I taken I just, a different I, life path, yeah, it's fascinating. You know, just the decisions we make in our lives and how they affect the next, you know, the next day, the next year, the next five or ten years. It's, it's you know, it's pretty crazy to think. And, um, you know, looking at um, your use of time, besides the decisions you make, if you're using your time to do something productive. You know, there's there's a good chance that it's going to uh, steer you in a good pathway in the future. There's no doubt about it. I would also say that it's hard to see when you have a setback in life what that setback might ultimately create for you. In other words, a setback is always labeled as bad. It's always immediately labeled as something that isn't good for your life. But in reality, you don't yet necessarily know when you have a setback, you might be experiencing the very best thing that could ever happen to you. A setback often leads to something unexpected, it leads to a change in direction, a change in trajectory. And sometimes that's exceptionally positive. Now, I spoke to you about my own story and I had some medical setbacks, but this is just a basic human story. All humans experience these problems throughout their lives. We all are subject to struggle, adversity, difficulty. It's part of being human. It's a, it's a quintessential part of being human. And I, I suppose the way that we approach those struggles is what matters more than anything. The way that we apply ourselves to the struggles. If we can bash through the obstacle or go around it or use it and leverage it, some of the best people I've ever met have found their superpower within their biggest setback. Absolutely. And that's that I love that. And that's exactly what I was going to ask you is, you know, how does um, how do you view this role of technology? Uh, in society today, and I know through your shift stream, you've you know you've spoken to a lot of these incredible people that have overcome adversity and used technology to try, um, you know, make their path and their life better. So, what role do you see this uh, exponential tech uh, play? Absolutely. Well, let me first say that there's a fascinating thing going on. We're not going to stop the technological train. Technology is a fundamental scientific pursuit, and we we should pursue it. But where we need to exercise huge restraint and caution is the way that we adopt technology. We should be using technology to uplift our species. We have an incredible power and even an obligation as a species to use the tooling that we are discovering to the betterment of our species and, of course, the planet as a whole. Technology is this unbelievable frontier or wavefront that advances at a rate that increases. So the more time that we spend with it, the more we find it changing and transforming, and therefore the greater the impact it will have on the planet and on us. And what's critical for us to do is to leverage this technology in a way that benefits not only ourselves, as we saw with incredible people who have changed their own lives as you point out in shift stream, but their ambitions are also to use technology to uplift the lives of others. And that's the beauty and power of technology is that we can operate at a level of scale that is totally unprecedented. So we can use these technologies to improve the lives of others in ways that we can't even yet imagine, but it's incumbent upon us to choose correctly how to use them. Yeah, exactly that. And I actually just saw recently Tilly Lockie, um, you know who who's who's got the, who works um, with Open Bionics and uh, is an incredible inspirational 
person just showing you know what's possible uh, with her with her robotics arm she was you know she was uh giving away uh, to someone else got their robotic arms it's just an incredible moment to see somebody being you know enabled again through technology what other real life examples um can you just give of, of other folks you know that are, are using technology to overcome some of their challenges it's a great question and tilly is totally inspirational as you point out she's just an ambassador all that she's overcome in terms of her own difficulties to become something better than she ever i suppose otherwise could have been she didn't see her situation of having lost her arms as really a setback she says that her hands are better than human hands she has these robotic arms which she does everything with makeup artistry and influencing and you know presenting on television and that's an extraordinary outcome because if you look at the 60s for instance i believe it was when the uncanny valley was hypothesized uh, uh, the in the uncanny valley in the uncanny valley if you research this you'll see that in the original images associated with the description of the uncanny valley there is a prosthetic arm and now it's the opposite of uncanny now this is a very powerful thought tilly is is demonstrating that she has created a superpower out of her adversity and that's that's extraordinary Another example who comes to mind is my dear friend, Godfrey Nazareth, who's been creating assistive devices to speak out, so, to, to give himself a voice again, because he lost his own voice due to ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Now, his ability to take that huge hit and turn it into an advantage, because he's now a keynote speaker. He goes and he brings down the house. He literally speaks to people he moves them so much he he gets thunderous applause just absolutely moving stories of how he's overcome adversity and his outlook of positivity and his ambition to like singularity university says impact a billion other lives these people are utterly extraordinary if you look at this in a different way we've got dr vivian ming who uses tech herself to improve the lives of others she wields technology to try to change the world by solving intractable diseases or intractable problems. We've got um, a variety of examples like this, people who are leveraging technology either to display themselves, to showcase themselves to others, to move others' minds, change mindsets, but also to leverage technology to directly improve lives. So we're in a whole new world around this, and it's really encouraging and refreshing that this is happening. I think more people need to focus on the positivity that technology may bring to the fore. Absolutely. And I just I just think those those people that you mentioned are really are changing the way, um, you know, uh, you know, hearts and minds uh, evaluate is is their life over or, you know, is there a second chance for me or can I do something to, um, you know, still lead a good life and a prosperous life? So you know, I love having a conversation with Nazareth. He's uh, with Godfrey. He's he's unbelievable. You know, um, it's, it's it's just Absolutely. really a, an extraordinary human being. Um, you look at each one of I mean, these cases, Nick. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. There's a bit of lag there, but it, but what I wanted to say to you is, if you look at each one of these cases, someone went through something very challenging that could have shut them down, but instead of being shut down, it's become their biggest superpower, and. I just, you know, I just want to tell you about one other example. And th there's a, an amazing guy in the UK who suffers from Parkinson's disease. His name is Matt Eagles. And instead of being debilitated by Parkinson's, which he ordinarily is, he goes out and advocates for patients' rights as a patient advocate in the UK. And he does this because he has a brain implant. And that brain implant enables him to get out of bed and in this really interesting twist of fate, go out and advocate for other patients like himself. So what I'm saying is each of these people are examples of people who have experienced extraordinary setbacks that have catapulted them to be what I believe the very best possible version of themselves. And that is an incredible idea. Yeah. If we embrace setback, we can become catapulted into something extraordinary. And this speaks to the idea of difference and diversity, because we've often in the past in our species found safety 
in behaving like the crowd to be together brought about safety and that that's no longer necessarily the case in modern times right now actually the more different we are the more power that potentially has the more opportunity that creates when we look at our differences whatever they may be cognitive differences differences in the way we approach problems there are various dimensions and pillars of difference that exist within our species and embracing these differences means finding a future that is totally different for you what we've often tried to do is ignore our differences or assimilate them into the mainstream and that is a disaster for our species in fact what we should be doing is totally embracing our differences because those dimensions are what mean that we approach problems differently those dimensions of difference mean that we think differently we behave differently no one has experienced the light that you Mick, have experienced in your life or the light that any of us have experienced illuminating our brains and that means that ultimately over time we can use that difference to catapult ourselves into being amazing in our own ways all entirely different it's just incredible and i think it's you know it's and it's it's something so important for everyone to realize because we all have this capability and ability within us and it's just about you know realizing it and actually embracing it uh, to go further um i want to shift the conversation a little bit around uh, artificial intelligence you know just you know as you were talking about uh, matt and and how he's you know he's got technology already integrated into him I know you do a lot of uh, work in AR and in healthcare and biotech and um, and connecting humans and machines. What are some of the exciting things uh, just to you know briefly share with the audience on you know what's exciting you about this convergence with AR and you know with the convergence of all exponential technologies from robotics or 3D printing, uh, blockchain. It's a pretty exciting time we we're leading into. It's no doubt it's, it should and can be the most exciting time for our species in the history of our species. We're at the forefront of an advancement so significant that it can irrevocably change our future. So there's, there's just no question in my mind that this is by far the most exciting time for a human ever to be alive. It is by far the most interesting time, the most impactful time. I think it's going to be fascinating to see what we end up doing with this. But when we're imbued with this power, we have great responsibility to, again, use it to serve our species and to uplift people. So that's really where we're at. We've, we wield this great power and we need to wield it responsibly, successfully. I guess what's most exciting for me right now, and there are tons of different frontiers of tech that are starting to converge in various ways and each uplifts the other. So when you have an advancement in AI, you may not see it necessarily immediately, but that ultimately can influence medicine. So then medicine improves. And so there's this bootstrap effect where technology is leading in some respect, and then a different type of technology is able to bootstrap that to catch up and leverage so quickly. So that's one thing we're observing in the exponential world. Another thing is where these two technologies converge. So it's not just that one discovery affects another field, it's that the advancing of, for instance, hardware and computing advances the field of AI. And then similarly, advancements in the field of AI can enhance computing. And so there's the symbiosis of each discipline, this crossover point where the two disciplines meet. And this is happening in sort of multidimensional space where multiple disciplines are working together and advancing at such an incredible rate that you get this bootstrap effect across these disciplines, between these disciplines. And that means that things move even faster overall. That's an extraordinary idea. And we're seeing this play out practically in the various industry domains. We're seeing it in healthcare. We're seeing this in the financial services sector, um, which I'd like to argue includes cryptos. We're seeing this play out in the core field of AI and machine learning in amazing, extraordinary ways. And what's really exciting for me is we're starting to see this change what it means to be a disabled person. It's that we have the opportunity to find ways of solving disabilities should the person who has the disability choose to have it solved. 
And that's a very, very empowering moment when we can democratize those ideas and spread them across our society. We're starting to find ways to lift ourselves up out of disease. Now that is extraordinary because that means that all of these people who were afflicted, who have lost aspects of their life, they regain function, they regain their autonomy, their independence, they regain the ability to do whatever they want to do in society. It's incredibly freeing. It's like a liberation moment for people who have previously struggled. Now I'll say, should these people choose to be, because there's a tough ethical question around solving disease and how adversity often leads us to success. Now juxtapose this with our conversation we were just having about people who have been through crazy adversity and have become extraordinary. Adversity, adversity is linked like DNA with our species and it makes us great. So if we were to be able to take a switch and just turn it off, that may change the way that, that, that we are human. It may change what it means to be human. And we have to debate the utility of that. But I think always the frontier of science is fantastic to solve the problem. And then we have to work out how we adopt that problem in society and give people access to the tools to change their lives if they choose to. That's really empowering. No, it's, yeah, it's incredible. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a techno optimist. So, you know, I really believe that uh, all of these technologies are empowering us to live better lives. And we've seen this, it's, you know, it's been, it's been going on for hundreds of years. The technology has always empowered us to, to lead a better life. Um, and it's always created more, <clears throat> more, more than take away, you know, it will, it will take away the old thing, but it will create more of the new thing. So I totally agree with you. I, I, I think that we are, you know, on the on the on the brink of something really special, um, and uh, it's a really exciting time to be alive. And, um, and just before we go, uh, you know, where can people reach you? And you know, how do people get hold of you or follow your journey online or on X or wherever, Thanks, wherever you? Uh... On X, I'm my full name, Adam Pantanovitz. You can. Follow me there on LinkedIn. You can connect with me. Or alternatively, please feel free to, to follow any updates in um, the public domain. Um, I'm still writing some papers, even though I've moved much more to in the innovation side. But really, really appreciate the engagement with people and the process of interacting with others to create something. So would love it if, if people get in touch. Thank you. Awesome. And thanks so much. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, and for sharing your incredible insights and experiences with us today. Uh, to all our viewers out, th out there, we hope that this episode has illuminated the vast potentials of technological innovation and inspired you to consider how you might contribute or benefit from this ongoing revolution. And remember, the future is being written now through the innovations we foster and the choices we make. So make sure to make good decisions and embrace these exponential technologies and join us next time in Exponential Africa as we continue to explore the cutting edge of technology and progress. Until then, keep innovating, keep dreaming, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. We're so excited that Adam will be joining us at the Singularity Summit on, on, in October 21-22. Make sure to get your ticket if you don't have one uh, to see him there and like and subscribe uh, to see more episodes. Cheers.